I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 7th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leo, Nicaragua. Today, we're gonna to be answering the question, why is the housing market so depressed in Nicaragua? Because someone asked. Now, first, we're gonna talk about the day, which is not gonna take very long, and I already recorded this entire episode and then figured out that my GoPro was on time warp, so that didn't work out so well. Uh, Today is Monday, and it was uh, generally just a work day. Uh, I spent the whole day uh, working in the office and then doing video work in the evening. The girls wanted to do videos for you guys today, and a couple of them. They ended up sleeping in all day until it was too late to do anything, uh, and so they ended up just doing school and stuff. We didn't get to do any videos. It's getting dark. I started this video, first of all, quite some time ago, and now I'm re-recording it, and a storm rolled in, so it's quite dark, even though it's not that late. Ah, that's unfortunate, but sometimes I got to do it without the most light. And, uh, oh, there's a dog in the middle of the street. Ah, oh, this drives me crazy. Um, so it's kind of rush hour. I'm trying to get out of the way, but still have enough open sky to give me some light when I'm recording. So I worked all day and there's not a lot to report. That's about it. So tomorrow, hopefully the girls are going to do some video stuff with me for you guys. Uh, but before we go into today's topic, I just want to say, please remember to like and subscribe. Share this on social media with your friends, because like I said, I don't have Facebook, so I rely on you guys for that uh, to get the word out. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, go down there and ask. That's how we're doing the episode today. Somebody asked the question, and it gives me material to talk to you guys about, because I don't always know what it is you're interested in. I'm going to cross the road here, because I see a good spot to stand. And... Uh, and we have this great community. You guys are awesome. Like, it's really cool the kind of people we have joining this, like, com travel, Nicaragua, Central America, get up expat, digital nomad community thingy we got going on. It's pretty cool. We don't really have a definition for any of it. And, uh... Uh, if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can buy me a coffee. That link is down there and that comes straight to me. And of course, you can also go on Amazon and buy my book. Just say, like, I watch this guy, I have his book. And people will be like, what, do you read it? No, no, listen, Linux administration, I don't read that. But it really helps if you buy the book, so consider that. <laughs> All right, today's topic. Why is the housing market so depressed in Nicaragua? And this is, this is sad, right? Because it's, it, this is not one of those stories of uh, the economy is not so great. But so in 2018, the economy took a big hit and the general economy went down pretty heavily. Uh, but in 2019, it started to recover. It made it about one year. If you're watching my throwback episodes, those are filmed at roughly the peak of the recovery economy in 2019. Things were coming back. The businesses were going again. Restaurants were working. But uh, I think they want to be on video. Hola! Hola. <laughs> and uh, uh, so things looked pretty decent when you watch that video in 2019, but they had just started to rebound. And right after that video, COVID hit. And that created a huge impact to the economy here, not just because this is years and years, about 10 years, Nicaragua had been heavily investing in, in tourism infrastructure as their future of the country. But they also had uh, this double whammy that because of COVID, COVID, creating this drop in that tourism. So that started to close restaurants, close hotels. Things started to collapse because they were already in rough shape and COVID hit really, really hard when lockdowns came. But also the airlines saw such a drop, drop in traffic that they closed the routes into the country. So nearly all of the airlines who would have kept coming to the country, that would have kept bringing in what few tourists there were, disappeared. And some of them completely abandoned the routes and some just closed them for two years. And we're hearing that they may be coming back this month. Well, we've been hearing that a lot, so we're not holding our breath on that. We're still looking for alternative ways to get in and out of the country. But things are coming back and it is possible that they will return sometime soon. But at this point, uh, in 2020, they got hit with just everything came to an, an, a standstill and they started losing businesses left and right. This created just a knock-on effect of the economy collapsing. This is really rough because both the local businesses and expat businesses were impacted, so there was nothing to prop up the other one. Both of them just started to go down. This created a continuing effect that a lot of the expats, possibly the majority of them, decided to leave the country and give up at that point. Uh, it's just the nature of expats. A lot of them tend to be fair weather uh, residents of a country. That's kind of how it works, right? In some cases, expats move to another country because they are looking for the specifics of that country. But in many cases, they are leaving a country that they that they didn't like all that much or it wasn't meeting their needs that well. And generally that means they're coming from a country that is having some negative and they're looking for one with a positive. When the one that they've moved to stops having that positive, they can simply move on to yet another. It's 
natural with expats and it is not a statement about any particular person. It is simply how it works and we would be included in that group if things were to change in Nicaragua and it was not to be favorable for, for us. One of the things that people say is, aren't you afraid of living in fill in the blank country because fill in the blank problem could happen? And generally the answer is, no, in almost no case. Of course, do I want to live in Western Russia right now while well, Ukraine might be able to invade? And no, I don't want to be in the middle of a war zone. But short of that, living in almost any country in the world is perfectly fine when you're an expat, even if things for the locals are good, bad, or whatever, because you have the option of when things are no longer favorable for, favorable for you, you'll just get on a plane and go somewhere else. It's just the nature of expatting. And because of that, huge droves of expats left the country, whether because their businesses failed, their future investments looked bleak, the restaurants that they like to go to were no longer open or whatever, the mood changed and those expats left. That caused a lot of things to happen all at once. Because of the overall drop in economy, we have a huge section of the middle of the economy, that is the middle-aged, middle-income people here in Nicaragua, stopped buying houses. Not all of them, but a lot of them, a huge percentage drop. So the market, the, dr the pressure that puts houses on the market that keeps their prices up went away. So the natural market pressure took away a whole bunch of the price. With expats leaving, what you had was a ton of people dumping houses at the top of the end onto the market. So suddenly the market was flooded with houses. Under normal conditions, having either of those things happen will cause an influx of other buyers. If the prices go way down, people will enter the country. But because of COVID, because of the lack of airlines, because of the general drop in economy, the country was hit really hard in a number of different directions all at once. And there was nobody coming in and is still nobody coming in to buy those houses. Because of that, we have a massive number of houses on the market at all price points and no buyers and no adjustment, no natural adjustment. Lacking that natural adjustment, the only thing that can happen is the prices drop. And right now the inventory is hard to predict. In reality, the number of houses that are available if you wanted to buy them is extremely high, but the number of houses that are available if you want to look for what's advertised is extremely low. Basically, every house is available, but none are making an effort because there are no buyers, so why would you? That is pretty much where we are. That means that the prices are theoretically extremely low. We don't really know how low they are because there's nothing moving. You only get prices when houses buy and sell, uh, which is the same thing, just two different aspects. And so without that, all we know is that it is very low and everything's available. Some people are unwilling to, to sell because they're so low, they'll rather just not make money on their house and that's perfectly fine. That's how you hedge against that. But that means you don't have a house you can sell. It means your personal value is diminished until such time as you can move that property. This has created just such a wide effect that the market is very, very low. That is just the start of it. That all fed into a general continuing economic collapse in more and more directions. Now we have, for the last year or so, a massively uh, increasing uh, a community of people who are leaving Nicaragua who are not expats. The expats have already gone. There are very few expats left to leave. And the number coming in is very low. So we're still seeing this, this very, very small number of current expats here in the country. Now what we've been seeing though is a huge exodus of the locals out of the country. Many are going to the United States, but many are going places like Spain or Canada or Mexico and Costa Rica and Panama. Because of this, and we have to put a number on this, what we've heard is something to the tune of 10,000 people per month exiting the country mostly because they're looking for jobs and they're going to economies that are a bit stronger currently because there is a giant problem with unemployment here. Now, when you have 10,000 people leaving the country in something like the United States, nobody notices. If 10,000 Americans were to leave today, they wouldn't even be able to track it. That is so few people. But when you're in a place like Nicaragua with a total population of only six and a half million and you're losing 10,000 of those a month, that means you're losing 120,000 a year. And the number could be as much as I've heard as much as double that. But 10,000 a month is pretty safe as a number. At 120,000, that's 0.1 million, over 0.1 million every year and as high as 0.25 million out of 6.5. That's one point, that is 1.2 out of 6.5, I'm sorry, that is 0.12 out of 6.5, or roughly one out of every 60 people in the country leaving each year. That's huge, that is noticeable anywhere. And it's not random people leaving, it's not babies, it's not retirees. 
almost all of those people are coming out of the house buying middle tier prime working ages. People who are eligible work for in, in other countries and are able to go work there and send money back for their families or take their, money, their, their families abroad or whatever. And so because of that, because of the group of people most likely to want to buy houses here in the country are leaving at unbelievably unprecedented numbers, that has created a huge vacuum, either that those people who are expected to be at the ages to want to buy houses, or there are already people who own houses who are now leaving and leaving houses empty, and everyone who is leaving an empty house is hoping to sell it in order to raise the money to leave or to fund their life in a new country. So that group is causing a huge effect of dumping houses onto the market at incredibly low desperate prices with no one to buy them. That is possibly the largest factor at this point, and that is continuing unabated right now. Uh, and so that is not going to change. It is going to take so much economic swing, so much population growth, so much returning of dis uh, diaspora for the real estate effect to turn around. It is not likely to happen anytime soon. So because of that, we are still seeing a decline. We are still seeing a decrease in the amount of, of pr value in the houses on the market uh, across the board. Now, the expat homes are gonna hit kind of a low threshold earlier because at some point people just start investing. Some pe at some point people just hold on to houses um, and there's, there's a certain amount of ability to do that. For the locals, there really isn't. There's essentially no bottom to the market and it's just gonna keep collapsing. Different price points have different effects, but overall it is very rough. So because of all that, the housing market, the economy in, the, in Nicaragua is incredibly bad. It is not going to change anytime soon. And, and it's just something you have to understand. So when people are out there trying to convince foreigners to pay top dollar or reasonable dollar for housing, it's not going to happen. Right now, your rentals are gonna be incredibly low. Purchasing is gonna be incredibly low. And if you're paying more than bottom, <laughs> rock bottom prices, you have every potential that you're gonna be stuck holding something that you cannot get a return on your investment on for potentially decades. So be really careful when looking at the market here. Be aware, everything is still going down. There is no short-term solution to this. Yes, if the airlines come back, that's gonna help a lot. If expats start, if tourists come back, that's gonna help a lot. As tourists comes back, they'll start bringing in expats. There's a lot of things. And the thing is not to scare you off. That does not say, oh my gosh, it's so terrible. You shouldn't buy here. You shouldn't rent here. You shouldn't come. No, it's the opposite. Never has the opportunity been so good, but don't come down with this thought of, oh, it's such a good opportunity. I'm going to go down and buy a business. I'm going to go down and buy a house. I'm going to make all this money. No, what you're going to do is save money, right? Buying a business is absolutely crazy. Investing in a business, unless you're doing purely for, and I've talked about this a lot, unless it's purely for your residency, there is zero chance that you are going to have a business make a lot of money here. That is not going to happen. The economy is crushed. Everything that they need is already supplied. If you add something to the economy, it will, it, all you can do is take away from, a, it's a zero sum game. I don't know where it's gonna come from. All you're gonna do is hurt somebody, but chances are you're gonna be the loser because you don't have the experience. Don't get delusional, be logical. The opportunity is low cost housing, low cost food, low cost labor, come down, buy a house, rent an apartment, eat at the restaurants, hire a lot of locals to do things for you, hire someone to clean your house, hire a private chef, do those things, create jobs, help the economy, make a difference, do those things. They will thank you, you will make a difference, you will put food on someone's table and you can live a lifestyle you can't live somewhere else. That is the advantage. The digital nomad, work remotely, lower your cost of living. That's where Nicaragua is today in 2022. In 2024, is it gonna be different? 2028, maybe. Maybe at that point, investing. Maybe at that point, businesses. At some point, this is gonna be a great business location. But today, it is not. Today, it is a low cost, save money location. And you just have to think of it that way. That doesn't make it a bad thing. It makes it a good thing for expats who are coming down to take advantage of that aspect of the situation. But that is how you get your value from Nicaragua today. And if you look at it in the right way, that value to you could be enormous. So come down, be realistic, 
And that's why the economy is the way that it is right now and is going to continue for the foreseeable future. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you still here in Nicaragua tomorrow.